are watching Darasa Online. Hello students, my name is Bruno Mrigo. Today we are going to discuss the topic of national income. So the subject is economics. And our topic is national national income and the subtopic you are going to cover is the methods of measuring national income subtopic is methods of measuring uh, methods of measuring national income. And we know the methods is the first one can use the product method uh, the second We'll discuss the expenditure method. And the third, we are going to discuss income method. So we are going to discuss these three uh, methods of uh, calculating or measuring the national income figure. Let us start with the product method. Uh, as uh, we know, product, we are talking about all the goods and services which is produced in the economy in a particular year. So product, product is equal to uh, goods and uh, services produced in the economy in a particular year. Now, to find the national income by using the product method, you need to take the market values of all final goods and services. You take the mar market values, it means we take the market values of all final goods and uh, services produced in the economy. So make sure that you use the final goods. When we say final goods, it means all goods which are ready for use. Final goods like, uh, let's say, clothes, when you buy it uh, or you produce it, and uh, th that clothes is going to be used by wearing, so we call it a final goods. Or you buy a, a product and you are going to consume, so that we call it a, a final goods. So now, how we can calculate the national income by using this product method? It means the national income will be equal to the summation of PIQI, whereby P is the price of a commodity and Q is the quantity of that commodity. So let's say you take the the price which is P1 times Q1 plus, let's say we have another product, let's say uh, maize. So you take the price of maize, which is P2, times the quantity of maize produced in the whole country. Then you add plus dash 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 plus Pn times Qn. So N stands for the number of prices and the Q stands for number of different goods and services we are producing in our economy. 
So to find the national income, you take the market value. This prices is the prices which prevail in our markets. For instance, the price of sugar most we know is about uh, 2,500 and so forth. So by using the product method, the national income will be obtained by uh, summing all these uh, revenues obtained when you, uh, you, you sell all the products. I, and uh, this method, as we said, we need to consider the final goods and services. Sometimes, to avoid double counting, in this method, you can use the value-added method or the value-added approach. Uh, let us consider, for instance, a commodity like a cement. Let's say cement, which is produced by a certain a company or industry. And we know maybe the prevailing market of cement is about, let's assume, is 20,000. Okay. Now, this price is the final price of this commodity, which is a cement. Now, but this product is resulted as a combination of different raw materials. We have stones, uh, which is used to produce uh, cement and other materials. So, assume now, uh, by using the value added, assume the first person extracted extracted stones uh, if his or her activities is extracting stones maybe that stones can value a uh, three thousand okay then person two Go and buy these stones and manufacture a cement in his or her industry. So a manufacturer buy this stone and uh, produce a cement which will cost a uh, 15,000. A manufacturer can sell the cement to the wholesaler. Let's say case 3, the cement will, before reaching the final user, will go to the wholesaler. Now the wholesaler wholesaler will uh, buy the cement from the manufacturing industry, then bring up to his or her store. Now the cost to buy a uh, cement to the wholesaler will increase from 15 to 18. Okay? So if you go and find the cement to the wholesaler, you will get for... 18,000. Also, the wholesaler will sell uh, this cement to the retailer. Number four, let's say the retailer the retailer will buy cement to the wholesaler and the retailer will sell this cement uh, 20,000. So you can see this process uh, of cement passed from the stones, manufacturer, wholesaler, and retailer. Now, if you go and ask the, 
each person in the economy what is produced. Person one will say he produced stones which uh, sold at 3,000. And when you go to manufacturer, manufacturer will say he produced a cement and sold it by 15. And a wholesaler will say he collected or he produced the cement and sold it by 18. And the retailer will say he collected the cement and sold it to final user by 20,000. Now, if you add all these uh, figures, you get the total uh, incomes from each person about uh, here will be 18, uh, 36, then 56. So when you take the total income or uh, revenue generated in each person will be, uh, the total will be total revenue be equal to 56,000. Now, this will not equal to total income or this will not uh, the national income. Since you double counted uh, the stones which is produced by the person one and uh, person two, three and four. Now, in order to find the national income by using a product method, we say we, you need to take the final price, which is the final price of the retailer. And uh, when the product is sold here, is going direct to the use. Now, to avoid the double counting, uh, of double counting like uh, person one, two, three, and four to be included, you need to use the value added. So the value added, so this is not a uh, national income, so don't, uh, this one, I said we need to use the value added approach. Now value added, it means you take the value which is increasing in each stage of production. Now, at stage one, the value added here, you'll take 3,000. And stage two, you'll see what is included from stage one to stage two. Here'll be 12,000. So this is value added in each stage. Then stage three, we can see increase from 15 to 18, so the value added here will be 3,000. And uh, to the fourth person, the value added will be uh, 18 up to 20 will be 2,000. You'll add the value added in each stage, so it will be uh, 3,000 plus 12,000 plus 3,000 plus 2,000. So the total here will be 15 plus uh, uh, 5,000 will be 20,000. So if our economy is producing only one commodity which is cement, the national income will be 2,000. So by using the value added method, you do like this one by adding the value added in each stage. Or you can take just the final price, which is uh, the retailing price, which is 20,000. It will be equal to the same as a, a value added in each stage. So that is case number one. Case number two, we said we can calculate the national income by expenditure method. Now, under this method, we need to sum up all spendings which is conducted in the economy. Means national income will be obtained by summing up all the expenditures of household, investors, firms, government, and so forth. So, when you ask you to calculate the national income by expenditure method, you take the consumption or expenditure of household, which is C, plus 
the expenditure of private investment, which is I, plus uh, government spending, G, plus X, which is the uh, goods the foreign spend or buy from our country, and you minus M, which is the imports, that is the goods and services we import from other countries. So, the national income by using expenditure method will be like this one. So, this C uh, stands for private or household consumptions, and I stands for uh, private investment, and G, government, spe uh, government spending, X, uh, export, and M, imports. So, now you take the expense on final goods and services. So our formula be this one. The third formula or the third methods we are using to calculate the national income is income method. Now under this method, you need to sum up all of the incomes which is received by the factors of production. You need to sum up all the incomes which is received by the factors of production. And uh, we know the factors of production, basically we have four factors of production, which is uh, our factors of production, factors of production in our economy are labor, land, capital, and uh, entrepreneurship or organization. So we have four factors of production. Now, we know the income from land is rent and the payment we make to labor is wages or salaries and for the capital is interest and for the entrepreneur is profit. So to find the national income by income methods, you need to add all these uh, incomes which the land, labor, capital, and return receive in the providing the services. So our formula will be equal to a wage plus a rent plus a interest plus profit. So if you are asked to uh, use income method to calculate national income, you add all these incomes or factors of production. So this is the three methods of calculating the national income. Now, let us discuss the concept of personal income. Personal income is equal to the summation or sum of all incomes received by household in the economy. So this is stand forward. Eh? Sum. So you take the total of all incomes received by household in the economy. So personal income will be equal to the uh, national income. Take national income, you add up net transfer. payments or net transfer payments and uh, these transfer payments are the money or some assistance from the government so if you receive the money from either the government or private sectors so that we call it the transfer payment so when you add it in the uh, national income you get personal income now the net uh, transfer payment this one is remained after deducting 
after you deduct the contributions like uh, uh, social security contributions, uh, issue of uh, uh, undistributed profit, uh, social security contributions, and so forth. So if you subtract those, you remain with what? Personal, personal, personal income. And disposable income, personal disposable income, personal disposable income, we take the personal income, you subtract or less uh, personal, personal taxes. So when you subtract the personal taxes, you remain with uh, personal disposable income. And this one will be used for, for consumption and for saving. So the amount which is you are free to consume and to save is the uh, personal disposable income. Okay, now let us go ahead and see the following problem. Uh, we are given that in a single year the following transactions in shillings we are made in the country A as a form. Innings from rent. Rent we are given. Rent equals to 5,000. Dividends. Dividends equals to 2,000. Then corporate profit, corporate profit equals uh, corporate profit taxes equals to 300. Then transfer payments, transfer payment equals to 350. Mixed income. Mixed income is equal to 6,000. Then we are given interest. Interest equals to 170. And distributed profit. and distributed profit and distributed profit was 200 then net factor income from abroad net factor income from abroad 1000 then we are given personal taxes. Personal taxes equals to 210. Then contribution to social security scheme, which is 500 and wages. Wages equals to 12,000. 12, now, our question is, compute the following. National income, personal income, personal disposable income, and domestic income. Let us start by, cal by calculating the national income. Uh, national income... Since here we are given the income received by factors of production, now the national income will be the sum of all uh, incomes which the factors of production receive in the economy, which is a wage plus rent plus interest plus profit. So now if you are 
calculating the national income the whole also you can add the net factor income from abroad you can write simply as a NIFA net income from abroad so in our information the wage is 12,000 so get 12,000 plus the rent and here we are given the rent is uh, 5,000 plus the interest. The interest is 170. Then you add the profit uh, here. The profit, you take this dividends. Dividends as the profits in shares. So you add it. Dividends, which is 2,000. Uh, then you need to add the mixed incomes. The mixed incomes need to be added, which is 6,000. Then you add the net factor income from abroad, which is 1,000. So, uh, when you add all this, here will be 17,000, then 19, uh, 25, 26, so it will be 26, 170. So the national income, this will be at the factor cost. So since it is the income of factors production, so the national income will be 26,107. So Roman 2, here is A, B, we're asked to calculate the personal income. Personal income. The personal income is obtained by taking the national income. You subtract those incomes which is in but not received, uh, like uh, undisputed profit, uh, social security scheme contributions, and uh, corporate profit taxes. So here you will subtract the undistributed profit, then you subtract social security scheme, then you subtract the corporate profit taxes, then you add the transfer payments. So here the national income is 26,170 minus undisputed profit was 200 minus social security schemes was 500 minus corporate profit taxes was 300 then plus Transfer payments, uh, the transfer payments was 350. So this, this one will be 1,000, so you take 26, 170 minus 1,000. Then you plus 3. 50. So when you subtract this one here, the man with 0, 7, 1, 5, 2, then you add up 350, then it will be 0, 2, 4, 5, 
then 5, 2. So the personal income will be 25,520. Now let us calculate the personal disposable income. Uh, The personal disposable income is obtained by taking the personal income less a, a direct tax or personal taxes. So, you can see the personal disposable income be equal to personal income minus personal, personal taxes. So it will be personal income minus personal taxes. So the personal income is 25,520 minus personal income. Uh, the personal income is 210. So when you subtract here, be 0, 1. Uh, three, five, two. So the personal disposable income be equal to twenty five, three hundred and ten. Then the last part here we are asked to calculate the domestic income. Now, for the case of domestic income, domestic income, uh, we can say gross domestic income will be equal to gross national income less net factor income from abroad. So the gross uh, the gross national income is twenty six one hundred and seventy then you minus the net income from abroad which is which we are given is 1,000. So when you subtract, the answer will be 25,170 shillings. So the domestic income, let's see, uh, D, and therefore the domestic, domestic income, be equal to 25,170 100 shillings. So this is all about the solution in this uh, problem. So make sure that you find more uh, problems and use the concept we learned to solve various problems. Since uh, these problems can appear uh, in your uh, coming exams. So do practice on that. So thank you. Now let us take a break. Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to solve some problems from you among of my students. Here I received a question from Jacqueline and students of HG from Mosh. The question is uh, we are given that given that GDP at a market price equals to eight hundred and fifty shillings, 
then we are given and the net net factor income from abroad is negative 1 negative 100 foot and the net indirect taxes net indirect taxes is equal to 20. Now the question is calculate calculate the GNP GNP at factor cost. Okay, now let us respond to the question. The solution we know that the uh, since here the information we are given GDP GDP at a market price equals to 850 then we are given net income from abroad which is negative 140 and net indirect indirect taxes which is equal to 20 but we are asked to calculate GNP at a factor cost is equal to how much according to the question so since we asked to calculate the GNP first we needed to calculate the GNP at a market price since we are given a GNP at a factor cost so GNP at a market price will be equal to uh, GDP at market price you add up net a factor income from abroad Okay, so to obtain the GNP at a market price, GDP at a market price plus net factor income from abroad. Now, we are given the GDP at a market price which is 8 and the 50. Then you add the net factor income from abroad which is a negative 140. So, when you add, here since it's negative, so less this one, so it'll be 0. One seven. So the GNP at the market price will be seven hundred and ten shillings. But we asked to calculate the GNP at the factor cost. Now the GNP at the factor cost will be equal to I hope you take a note in this problem the GNP at a factor cost equals to GNP at a market price you less or you subtract net indirect uh, taxes so to get the gross national 
product at a factor cost, you take the gross national uh, product or you get the gross national product at a market price, you less the uh, indirect taxes. So the gross national product at market price we obtained there is 710, then you minus the net indirect tax, which is 20. So when you subtract it, be 0, 9, 6. So the gross national product at a factor cost will be 690 shillings. So I hope you get the solution. So thank you for listening. This is the end of our session. Goodbye. <laughs>